Hello everyone. Perinatal asphyxia is my today's lesson. To start from definition of perinatal asphyxia, perinatal asphyxia is an insult to the fetus or newborn due to lack of oxygen or lack of perfusion to various organs. Lack of oxygen is called hypoxia and the lack of perfusion is called uh, ischemia. Uh, it can also be defined as failure to establish efficient breathing at one minute of age. That means Abgar score at one minute of age less than six is uh, used as a uh, diagnostic criteria for uh, most centers. Uh, mostly, it is associated with tissue lactic acidosis or umbilical cord pH less than 7.5. And the definition based on Abgar is not applicable in uh, preterm babies, in babies with birth trauma, and in babies with congenital neurologic anomalies. So, we apply uh, Abgar score as a definition for perinatal asphyxia for uh, uh, those who are term, who, are, uh, who do not have birth trauma. Uh, would not have congenital neurologic anomalies. Uh, when we see the epidemiology of perinatal asphyxia, the incidence of perinatal asphyxia ranges from 1 to 1 1.5 out of uh, 100 newborn. Uh, this is mostly in developed countries, and in developing countries, it's more than this. Uh, this is directly related to birth weight and the gestational age. Uh, perinatal asphyxia is more common in preterm babies than ternal babies. It ranges around uh, 9% in those less than 36 weeks and 23% uh, of those who have perinatal asphyxia uh, die uh, in, uh, within the first months of life. When we see the cycle of asphyxia, hypoxia and acidosis can depress myocardial function and ischemia can impair oxygen delivery causing further compromise as well as disrupt the delivery of substrate and the removal of metabolic and respiratory byproducts like lactic acid and the carbon dioxide. Uh, when we see the timing of injury that predispose for asphyxia, uh, majority of injury occurs during intrapartum period around 70% and antipartum period is responsible for around 20% and postpartal period is responsible for around 10%. Uh, however, the timing of injury is difficult to establish for an individual infant in part because uh, antipartum and intrapartum events may not lead to signs that are detectable in the fetus. In addition, a fetus who has suffered an intrapartum insult might be at increased risk of incurring further intrapartum injury. Uh, when we see risk factors for perinatal asphyxia, we classify risk factors for perinatal asphyxia into three, antipartum, intrapartum, and postpartum. To start from antipartum, uh, abnormal maternal oxygenation during pregnancy, like presence of severe anemia and caldopermonary disease can predispose for PNA. Uh, Inadequate placental perfusion and or gas exchange like maternal hypertension or severe hypotension, placental insufficiency caused by vascular disease, uh, congenital infections or anomaly can uh, predispose for uh, antipartal cause of PNA. Uh, regarding interapartal causes, interruption of umbilical circulation due to through node cord prolapse, cord deviation can predispose for asphyxia. Inadequate placental perfusion and or gas exchange like placental abruption, uterine rupture, severe maternal hypotension, abnormal uterine contraction can predispose for asphyxia. Uh, traumatic delivery like shoulder dystocia and the difficult breech extraction can also be a risk factor for having a baby with perinatal asphyxia. The other is abnormal maternal oxygenation during uh, intrapartal period, uh, for example, if there is pulmonary edema. And the postpartal causes include persistent pulmonary hypertension of the newborn and severe circulatory insufficiency of the newborn due to either acute blood loss or septic shock or anything that causes circulatory insufficiency. Uh, congenital heart disease, especially critical congenital heart disease, is also a risk factor for having postpartal uh, PNE. Overall, placental insufficiency is responsible for 90% of uh, PNE, whereas the remaining cause is responsible for around 10%. Uh, when we see the organ involvement, all organs can be affected by perinatal asphyxia and hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy has the most serious sequel. So even though every organ is affected by PNA, uh, insult to the brain is more uh, uh, permanent and it might last uh, for a prolonged period and it might cause serious sequel. In contrast to the persistence of neurologic injury, dysfunction of other organs typically resolves before hospital discharge. 
overall when we see commonly affected organ the most common affect, uh, commonly affected organ is kidney followed by cns this is followed by cardiovascular and pulmonary uh, when we see the effect of pna on different organ system in cns it can cause hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy brain infarction intracranial hemorrhage seizure cerebral edema hypotonia hypertonia and the like in cardiovascular myocardial ischemia poor contractility uh, tricuspid insufficiency hypotension can occur on pulmonary pulmonary hypertension pulmonary hemorrhage and rds can also happen uh, rds happens because uh, production of uh, surfactant needs appropriate uh, oxygen uh, delivery and also blood supply so hypoxia and ischemia affects the production of surfactant uh, when we see the effect of asphyxia on renal system it can cause acute tubular or cortical necrosis it can cause adrenal hemorrhage, it can cause GI perforation, ulceration, or necrosis. Uh, it can cause inappropriate secretion of ADH, hyponatremia, hypoglycemia, hypocalcemia, and it might also cause uh, subcutaneous fat necrosis and it might end up in DIC. As we have said, the serious sequel of PNA is hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. Uh, we say anoxia if there is complete lack of oxygen as a result of a number of primary causes. And we say hypoxia if there is decreased arterial concentration of oxygen. And we say ischemia if there is blood flow or to cells or organs is insufficient to maintain their normal function. Uh, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy is an important cause of permanent damage to CNS tissues that might result in neonatal death or that might manifest later as cerebral palsy or, or developmental delay. Uh, 50 to 20 percent die in the neonatal period and 25 to 30 percent of survivors are left with permanent neurodevelopmental abnormalities uh, like cerebral palsy and mental retardation uh, the greatest risk of adverse outcome is seen in infants with fatal acidosis with ph of less than 7 5 minute abgar score of less than 3 and stage 3 pna and also other multi-organ system uh, involvement when we see the pathophysiology of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, after an episode of hypoxia and ischemia, anaerobic metabolism occurs, which generates increased amount of lactate and inorganic phosphates. And also, in addition to lactate and inorganic phosphate generated by anaerobic metabolism, excitatory and toxic amino acids, particularly glutamate, accumulate in the damaged tissue. And also, increased amount of intracellular sodium and the calcium might result in tissue swelling and cerebral edema. Uh, so there is also an increased production of free radicals and the nitric oxide in the tissue which causes tissue damage uh, when we see the pathology of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy uh, the neuropathology of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy is gestational age specific on term babies hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy causes neuronal necrosis of the cortex that might later present with cortical atrophy and the parasagittal ischemic injury and on preterm babies Prevent recurrent leukomalacia that later causes spastic diplegia and also oh, status marmorates of the basal ganglia and the IVH or intraventricular hemorrhage can occur. Uh, term more often than preterm infants have focal or multifocal cortical infarcts that clinically manifest as focal seizure and hemiplegia. Uh, when we see the clinical manifestation of uh, PNA, during labor and the delivery, fatal heart rate slows, bit to bit variability declines. Continuous heart rate recording might reveal a variable or late deceleration. And if fatal skull pH is done, it shows acidosis with pH of less than 7.2. And the acidosis is usually both metabolic and respiratory components. Uh, and also at delivery, baby's meconium stained, and also there is meconium stained amniotic fluid. And at birth, the baby is depressed and they fail to breathe spontaneously, and the baby might be pale, cyanotic, apneic, or uh, bradycardic, uh, cerebral. Uh, there is a staging system for hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy from PNA. Uh, this staging system is used for management as well as also for prognostic uh, outcome. We say stage one, if a baby is hyper alert, hyper alert, normal muscle tone, normal posture, hyperactive deep tender reflex, myoclonus is present, Moral reflex is strong, pupils are myriatic, and there is no seizure, and also uh, EEG is normal in stage 1. In stage 2, the baby is lethargic, hypotonic, and uh, on posture, uh, there is flexion of the extremities. Uh, tender reflex is hyperactive, 
and myoclonus is present and there is seizure and the pupil is myotic and uh, the duration of uh, problem lasts from 24 hours to 14 days but it might improve either rapidly or it might progress to stage 3 and the outcome in stage 1 is good in stage 2 it is variable and, uh, in stage 2 EEG is most of the time it shows low voltage uh, changing to seizure activity on stage 3 uh, regarding level of consciousness the baby is comatous or stuporous uh, flaccid, decerebrate posturing, uh, absent tendus reflex, absent myoclonus, absent moro reflex, anuquar or poor light reflex, uh, decerebration, and on EEG, breast separation to isoelectric can be seen, and the outcome is uh, most of the time it's no, not a good, it's bad for stage 3. Regarding treatment, careful attention to ventilatory status, adequate oxygenation. Hemodynamic status, acid base balance, and the possible infection is important. Uh, also, we should have to avoid BP fluctuation and secondary hypoxia or hypotension due to complications of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy must be uh, prevented. Uh, aggressive treatment of seizure is critical and it might necessitate continuous EEG monitoring. Uh, also, since such patients are at risk of cerebral edema, we should have to give two thirds of the maintenance fluid and the uh, seizure control with anticonvulsant like phenobarb, phenotene uh, should be given. And systemic or selective cerebral hypothermia for the acute management of hypoxic ischemic cephalopathy is very important. Uh, there are uh, indications to do uh, hypothermia management for PNA. Uh, this hypothermia management decreases the rate of apoptosis and suppresses production of mediators known to uh, to be neurotoxic, including extracellular glutamate, free radicals, nitric oxide, and the lactate. So hypothermia management is important. When we see the prognosis of PNA, the prognosis depends on the extent of neurologic injury, so it depends on the degree of hypoxic ischemic cephalopathy. Uh, stage 1 uh, hypoxic ischemic cephalopathy is expected to be a uh, normal outcome in more than 98%, whereas those babies who have stage 2 hypoxic ischemic cephalopathy is expected uh, either to die or to have abnormal developmental outcome in 20 to 37%. Uh, if a baby is having stage 3 hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, uh, 50 to 89 percent of them either die and the rest have uh, major neurodevelopmental impairment. So, 50 to 89 percent will die if there is stage 3 hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, whereas the rest of the survivors have major neurodevelopmental impairment. So, prevention is very important than treatment in the case of PNA and uh, progress depends on the extent of the neurologic injury. Uh, thank you for your attention. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a good time.